Hi, I'm Scott Kuna from Mtron, and we're at PRI 2024. I'm going to take you for a tour of our booth, starting with our range of dashes. So we have the ED7M, ED7, ED10, M. The M is, uh, refers to the Motorsport or Milspec connector. The 7 without the M uh, has an automotive connector on it. Uh, they all have the same high quality display. The main difference between them besides the connector is their size. There was a lot of push to make attractive visually dashes, and it's just like big is better. That's kind of where it got driven from, yeah. From the top down, we have our flagships uh, ECU here. It's the KV series. It's available in a KV8, 12 and 16, 16 being the highest. It refers to the injector count. That's been a staple platform for the company for many years. This is our SL series. It's available in SL4, SL6, SL8. More or less the same technology as the KV. However, it's a 68 pin connector ECU as opposed to 120 pin connector. And this is our new unit. This is our entry level. It's called Shadow 8. It's a 68 pin connector ECU, eight injector channels. It's USB comms as opposed to ethernet for these two. It was predominantly produced for uh, LS engines, Coyote, Ford uh, Godzilla engine as well. It's available with the Scent protocol, which the Godzilla engine has on the throttle body. So very, very specific. It can be used in other, like, in a universal fashion as well. It has, like, less logging than the others, and the USB comms is slower than the Ethernet communication. So it still has uh, all the available motorsport features, um, but it is a little bit leaner on hard hardware. KV's got a huge I.O. count. So 120 pins. It's got Lambda built in as well. Motorsport wise they're both exactly the same except this has peak and hold injector drivers this does not so that's a big thing if you have an application that is a motorsport environment doesn't need as many pins maybe like a motorcycle or just a uh, an engine with like less sensors on it the SL will will be perfectly fine we don't think twice about any like pro class time attack it's going to be a KV and more often than not it will be a KV8 the KV16 and KV12 is more uh, to be reserved for the higher cylinder counts so here we have featured the generic Mtron ED10 Dash. We also have the new VC10M produced by Mtron for off speed. It's been developed over the last 12 months based on a handshake agreement from meeting the guys there uh, at PRI 2023. VC10M is the, the VC's vehicle control, the 10 is a 10 inch screen, and the M is related to the connector system just like the ED10M and ED7M. Huge capabilities because it controls every aspect of the car, it integrates with all of the Mtron electronics, it can do all the security systems in the car, electric windows, power door controls, all the headlight, tail light. This is basically a representation of that vehicle there, which is the split ray. It's a six and three eighths inch wider than the Corvette Stingray that it that was produced from. It's meant to be a production car. It's called the uh, the Roth Speed Split Ray. As I said, they approached us a, a year ago uh, to do the project and we, we came up with this idea of doing this VC10M in it. It's completely different to what we're used to because we're a motorsport-based company and now we're developing uh, electronics for a production car. So this car was released in, in February uh, next year uh, and available for sale. The electronics package is, is completely Mtron. We're running a KV16, uh, we're running a direct injection uh, control driver that we haven't even completed yet for the, for the public. We have uh, two PDMs, we have uh, Mtron keypad, Mtron ED10M, Basically, the whole Mtron catalogue that we just talked about is in this car. The challenges are that in the motorsport environment, you're constantly developing the, the car to go faster. Whereas in this environment, we're trying to get the car to be refined, reliable, and it needs to make its service routines. And so it's a totally different challenge. It needs to have a lot of, obviously, a lot of street manners. It's just a, it's actually a lot more difficult in some ways than a race car. This product's become like a bit of a mule. This is actually car zero of their build. It's had different iterations of transmission, it's allowed us to kind of open up to the idea of producing products for like transmission control for example even the power distribution we've basically to totally rethought the way that we're going to deal with power distribution so the products that we'll be rolling out over the next sort of two years uh, will be heavily influenced by this I think this car has inherited a lot of our motorsport experience that you wouldn't really easily get from an OEM manufacturer environment but on the same token I think that we can pass on some of the development from from this car to the motorsport as well so it's going to be a two-way street I'm very excited about the future.